Hi everyone, welcome to another Rubber Dance Design Team video. This time I'm going to be mixing and matching the stamps that I use, but I'm going to bring the whole thing together with a lovely pastel um, colour scheme. And I hope that you like it, it's quite a pretty card, and uh, I had lots of fun doing it, and I'll be showing you lots of different techniques along the way. And don't forget, if you want to purchase any of these stamps, just pop along to rubberdance.com and you'll be able to make your purchases there. So I'm going to be using this collage stamp to begin with, and that's the stamp you'll see that inspired the design for this card. It's very, very pretty, and uh, that's also what um, inspired the colour scheme. So the next set I'm using a stamp from is Think Again, and you get all these lovely sentiments on this stamp sheet and I'm just going to be using a couple of words from one of them and I'm also only going to be using one of the stamps from the collage elements number one set and I'm going to be using these pretty butterfly wings. So grab a cup of coffee and put your feet up while I show you how to make this very pretty card and I'll be showing you lots of inky techniques along the way that you can use if you try to make this card for yourself or any other card designs that you might be thinking of making yourself. So I've got my three stamps mounted already. I'm going to be using a pastel uh, colour palette. So I've got shabby shutters, tumble glass, dried marigold and scattered straw distress inks. So a very delicate and feminine colour palette. I'm going to be using uh, what look like shaving brushes to add the ink to my card and I will show you how to do that in just a moment. And as usual, there'll be links at the end of this video that will take you back to my blog where you can pick up the cutting guide if you want to make this card for yourself. So the card measures 11 and a half inches by five and three quarter inches and I've scored it at five and three quarter inches to make a square card. And in centimetres that would be 29 centimetres by 14 and a half centimetres scored at 14 and a half centimetres. And I'm working on a sort of ivory coloured card stock. So it's definitely not white, it's sort of got a cream uh, base to it. So quite often when you use distress inks you'll use um, an ink blending tool to add the ink to the surface of your cardstock. But I'm going to show you how nice the effect is when you use brushes. Now this actually could be a makeup brush, old makeup brushes, definitely not ones you're still using, um, and you, some kind of soft stenciling brush. You can buy these brushes specifically for this purpose. Um, and they do look very, very similar to shaving brushes. So you're going to lightly swirl the ink onto your cardstock, and I'm gonna try and create a kind of pastel rainbow. And you can see that it actually, because the paper that I'm working on is my uh, scrap paper to stop it going on my craft mat, is slightly more porous than the cardstock. You can see it actually takes um, more color onto that surface so you'll know that when you work with this technique that if your card is slightly shiny you will have to work harder to get um, the ink onto the card surface but if you're working on a very matte card um, it soaks up the ink much quicker and I'm working with first of all with the shabby shutters and now I'm coming across diagonally across the card creating a uh, another stripe of colour with tumbled glass as I speed up the video, I am going to tell you that you can take your time with this technique. It's about building up the colour gradually to achieve an airbrushed look. So I'm switching uh, brushes as I switch colour of ink and I am now um, brushing on some scattered straw. And while you're working, just go back and forth between the stripes just to build up the depth of colour that you want. And then finally, I'm coming in with some dried marigold and then I'm going to repeat uh, starting again with the shabby shutters just to give myself a lovely pastel rainbow across the front of the cardstock. Again working on the scrap of paper means I'm less likely to get ink on the back of my card and you can see I've got a lovely masked effect there as I lift my card up from the uh, scrap paper that I'm working on. I'm just going to keep going until I'm happy with the depth of colour and making sure that everything is blended nicely across the front of the card. So I'm laying down my rainbow of ink colours first and then I'm going to create my own background paper effect by using the butterfly wing stamps. So I'm happy with that and I haven't got ink everywhere which is always a good sign and I'm going to now carry on with some stamping. 
So I'm going to be using the butterfly wings from the collage elements number one and I'm going to be um, inking them up so that I've got half of one colour and half of another. So I'm doing it top to bottom not side to side as I did the first time. So I get my butterfly half green and half blue in this instance and I'm going to be stamping him all over the stripes and um, you can spot the deliberate mistake I've stamped my butterfly upside down but as I am working on this card in a random fashion it won't matter because I'm going to twist and turn the butterfly now to cover the rest of the card. So I'm just switching the, the inking of the stamp between the blue and the green. Sometimes I've got blue on the bottom and sometimes I've got green on the bottom. And I'm just filling in the area roughly where the blue and green is on the card. Don't forget to stamp off the edge of your card. So we're trying to achieve the look of a patterned paper and you would have um, bits of the pattern disappearing off the edge of the paper if you were using it. So. Uh, that's the kind of look that we're going for and I'm just stamping my blue and green butterflies roughly within the area of the blue and green stamps and then I'm going to switch the colour of my butterfly into the scattered straw and the dried marigold. So cleaning my stamps in between and then I'm going to fill in this central area. Now if you're doing this for yourself I would suggest because it does get a little bit tricky here that you work from the top uh, top left hand side of your card down to the bottom right and that way you won't have to do what I'm doing here which is really uh, trying my best to fit the butterfly in the area that I've got left whereas if I'd worked gradually down the surface of my card it wouldn't be quite so difficult. So again twisting and turning that butterfly and inking it in the two colours and then filling in the stripe down the centre of the card. So this is this was the tricky one to fit in. I'm just making sure that I can line this up because I didn't really want them to overlap if I could help it. There we go. <laughs> so in no time at all you've got a pretty butterfly background ready for the rest of the elements of your card. And now I'm going to begin working on the main stamped image or the feature image for the card and I'm going to be um, watercolouring this with my Distress Inks. So I'm stamping with an archival ink which is called Potted Soil. It's a Wendy Vecchi colour and that is a permanent ink so once that is dry on the surface of my card I'll be able to use the watercolours uh, or the watercolour technique using my Distress Inks. So working on a piece of cardstock that's slightly bigger than the stamp, so this is the Resting Woman collage stamp and I'm stamping onto a piece of cardstock that measures three and a quarter inches by three and three quarter inches but I'm not too worried about this because um, I'm going to cut it out so it just needs to be slightly bigger than your stamp and if you're working in centimetres that's about eight by ten centimetres. So now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about whether to mount your stamps onto uh, something like U-mount which is like cushioning that you put behind your stamp and it does help with getting a good um, image. Now I found that rubber stamps that don't have cushioning at all, when they're small it's okay. You'll quite often get a really good impression whether you mount them or not. But on a larger stamp it does make a bit of a difference because you've got a bigger surface area to make sure that comes into contact with your paper and you can see here that there's just a little bit of fading around uh, the area of the side of the head of the lady. Everything else is stamped perfectly but there's just that little bit there that's not quite right. So I suggest then that you either mount your stamps, your larger stamps in particular, or you work on a slightly cushioned surface. So I'm using a little piece of funky foam, but you could equally use something like a, uh, the soft side of a mouse mat. And you can get stamping mats that do the job as well. And then I'm re-inking my stamp and I'm hoping that you can see the difference that that cushioning makes. So just making sure I do stamp on the little cushion sheet and pressing down exactly the same as I did the last time and I've got a much clearer image that side is completely uh, intact now whereas it wasn't quite before 
So that will happen no matter what stamps you're using. If they are unmounted, the larger images tend to need something underneath them, something just with a little bit of give to get a completely um, true image. So that's got nothing to do with the actual uh, stamp itself. It's just to do with the fact that there's a large surface area uh, to be pressed flat against your paper. So now that I've had my little practice run, I've got my piece of card on my piece of foam and now I can see uh, what I'm doing because I can see the where the foam is compared to the size of my little piece of card and then I'm stamping my lady which will become my focal image. Perfect. <laughs> And while I'm stamping with my archival ink, I'm going to stamp a couple of butterflies. I'm not sure how many I'm going to use yet. So I'm again stamping and you can see here the image is perfect. This is a much smaller stamp. I'm not using any cushioning and I still get a perfect image. So I'm not sure how many I'm going to use. So I'm just going to stamp a couple more just in case. And they might come in handy for something else anyway, even if I don't use them this time round. And as well as my butterflies, I want a couple of the words from this word stamp. So I'm just stamping it twice just to make sure I've got uh, what I need for my card front. So, so far we have dry brushed our inks onto our card surface and we have stamped with our inks. And I have to say that distress inks are my favourite. You'll see me using them the most uh, because they are quite versatile. And I'm going to be using them now as a watercolour. So you can do this with other water-based inks um, and you're just using them like a paint. So you just squidge a bit of the ink onto your craft mat and then just use a slightly damp paintbrush to pick up the colour and spread it onto your image. So I'm going to keep things nice and light. I'm working in the same pe for paint or ink colours that I have used on my background. But I'm just keeping everything nice and delicate and I'm doing this by building up colour gradually. So starting out with the tumbled glass and I'm just going to be colouring in all the background area, things that I perceive as the background. So I'm trying to just delicately go around the flowers and as you run out of paint then you can just squidge your ink once more against your craft mat and off you go again. And I'm making sure that when I come to any areas where perhaps the colour will change even though there might not be a def definite line where the colour is changing, like on her arm and where the sofa begins, um, I'm just gradually building up the colour and then fading it out in the areas where the colour changes. So I have shown you this technique um, on the last video that I made and you just want to add the colour gradually until you are happy with the depth of colour. Anywhere where you want the actual paint to blend out, as I do here, wet your brush, take the colour off your brush, dry your brush slightly and just drag your brush along the area that you want to fade out. So zooming in a little bit closer so you can see a bit more of the detail of what I'm doing. You can see it really is a very delicate hint of colour and this is where I'm just taking or blending that colour out with the clean brush. And coming back in and darkening some of the areas along the edge of the image. One thing that you don't want to do is get your um, cardstock too wet. So definitely if you've overworked an area, let it dry off a bit before you carry on. Otherwise you'll just peel the surface of the cardstock and spoil all your hard work. Now I'm using the um, dried marigold as a flesh tone and I'm being very, very careful not to go too um, heavy handed with this because I don't want her to look like she's been tangoed. I just want a delicate flush of colour. 
and so I'm definitely using lots of water and only a little bit of the ink and the beauty of this is you can run over your image with water and lift some of the ink if you are a little bit heavy handed and I'm just trying to create just a little tiny bit of shading where I think uh, the image would be slightly darker. So a little bit on her lip. And just under her chin here would be a little bit in shade. Now I'm switching to the scattered straw and I'm going to give her a lovely yellow dress. So starting out with the colour lightly first. And it's just a case of thinking where there might be shadows. So I think her arm would create a shadow on her dress here. And as I blend out her skirt, just going to work on the areas that I think would be slightly darker so there are lots of folds in the skirt around this area so just darkening it slightly around where all the gathers are on the top And then I just take the brush again and just take it over any harsh lines just to blend them out with a clean brush. So really to, to build up any kind of expertise at this you do have to practice. So stamp out lots of images and try painting them in different colours. The ones that work you'll be able to use on cards and the ones that don't well. It's only paper and you can throw it away. So I'm going to have a bit of a green sofa and I think there's a bit of a cushion going on. So I might add a little bit of colour on what look like flowers on a cushion. And I'm going to be using the peach and the, or the orange dried marigold and the uh, scattered straw. Just to give a hint that there's a bit of a flowery cushion that this lady is leaning on. And then the last thing that I need to do is just colour in these teeny tiny flowers. And I'm just going to do a mixture of the uh, dried marigold and the scattered straw. And it was these teeny tiny flowers that inspired me um, the way that I wanted to decorate this card, which you'll see shortly. adding a little bit slightly darker shade to the flower centres and then coming back in to finish the yellow flowers. I'm also just creating a wash of the scattered straw over the words that I'll be cutting out. And then it's time to paint some butterflies. So I'm just going to mix and match the colours on the butterfly wings. So starting out with a yellow butterfly and adding some orange details. So I've got one orange, one blue and one green butterfly. And then I'm just coming in with complementary colours. So I've got orange on the blue. Just filling in some of those little details just for a contrast. Working with the blue on the green. And so on. So working on another piece of cardstock, here's another way to add ink to your project. And this time I'm just going directly from the ink pad to the paper. You definitely need a bit of scrap paper otherwise you get fingerprints all over it. So I'm just holding it with a piece of scrap paper and you can see even with 
the scrap paper I am getting or lifting some of that ink and that's because the distress ink stays wet it stays wet longer so that you can blend it that's the beauty of the distress ink so I'm just drying it off with my heat gun so that I can flip it over so I've used scattered straw on this side and I want to use the dried marigold on the other and this is the paper that I'm going to use to punch out the little blossoms uh, that I'm going to decorate the front of my card with so this is the most intense way that you can add the colour to cardstock by directly um, pressing the ink pad or rubbing the ink pad over the card surface. And again, I'm drying off the wet, wet ink. So I've got orange on one side and I've got the golden yellow on the other. So sometimes I like to add a paper inner to the centre of my card and because this is so delicate and pretty I'm going to do that here. So I've got some cream paper that I've cut to 11 inches by 5.5 inches and then I've folded it, folded it in half at 5.5 inches. That measures 28 centimetres by 14 centimetres and um, folded in half at 14 centimetres. And now I'm going to be using that same brushing technique to add colour to the top and bottom edges of the inner. So I'm going right across the whole thing and I'm using the scattered straw first and I'm just building up some colour along the bottom edge of the paper. You need to be a little bit careful that you don't catch the corner of your paper. Um, I have got this on slightly fast forward so it looks a little bit more uh, violent than it actually was in real life. I'm just being quite delicate and building up the colour slowly. And then I just want to darken the edge slightly by switching to the dried marigold. So again using a piece of scrap paper to hold on to the inner so I don't get any inky marks where I don't want them. And then just blending in a slightly darker edge with the orange. And then I'm going to flip the whole thing over and I'm going to repeat the process. This time I'm going to be using the scattered straw and the shabby shutters, so the green. So just blending out that uh, yellow along the inside edge and then coming in and repeating across the top edge. So I'm just creating a panel in the centre where I can put my greeting. Now quite often I'll get to this stage with a card and I won't actually stamp any greeting. I'll leave it blank so that when uh, the time comes to give this card to someone I can pick the most appropriate uh, greeting for the occasion or for the particular person that I'm going to give it to. But today I'm going to use that quote stamp and uh, I'm going to leave myself room that I could put a happy birthday if I wanted to. So switch into the shabby shutters and then just adding a little touch of green along that top edge. So this technique is a great way to add a delicate touch of colour to things. And then just blending out with the scattered straw. So then I stamped right across the top and right along the bottom of the card inner and switching the colours of my inks as I did so. So across the top I used the scattered straw and the green. Again I mixed and matched. Sometimes I had green at the bottom, sometimes I had yellow at the bottom. Exactly the same way as we stamped on the card front. And I went right across the top of the card and then at the bottom I used the uh, dried marigold and the scattered straw and I stamped right across the bottom and I kept the butterfly up the same way. Then I stamped my greeting and I have stamped it slightly higher than the centre because I wanted to leave enough room if I wanted to stamp something like happy birthday underneath the quote I could do so. And then I finished with the two little butterflies, one in the green and the yellow and one in the orange and the yellow at the bottom. The other thing that I've done is cut out all my little pieces. So I followed the line around the outside of the collaged image. I've also cut out my words separately and I'm going to be using the words dream and wish but I wasn't sure how many I was going to use at this point. And the same with the butterfly wings. I've cut them all out and I'm ready 
to put this card together. I'm also using this tiny flower punch to punch out lots and lots of little tiny flowers from the orange and yellow paper that I coloured with the Distress Ink pads. When we attach the butterfly wings to our cards, we're going to shape them and to be sure that uh, that cream cardstock isn't showing, I'm going to just uh, colour over the underneath of the butterfly wings. So using the same colour as the butterfly wing is on top, I'm just colouring in that underneath area. And here's another way to use your inks. This time I'm going to be highlighting the edges of the card. So I'm using an ink blending tool to do this and I'm using a dark brown ink that matches the archival ink that I used. And I'm trying not to get too much onto the cardstock. I'm literally trying only to cover or colour the very, very edge of the cardstock. And you can see here, it just makes it stand out just that little bit better. It means there's no sort of cream card uh, poking out of the edge of any of the stamping. On here there is no stamping on the very edge but I'm just outlining the edge of these little word panels. I'm keeping my um, ink vending tool almost vertical so sort of at 90 degrees to the actual card stock and I'm just making sure that I don't press the card too far into the foam so that it just literally gives a hint of the brown colour around the edge of the card. It's a little bit trickier when you come to the butterflies because you've got the curved surface, but you can definitely tell a difference uh, between the inked version and the non-inked version. Although, looking at it here, you can't see it on camera. <laughs> it just gives it that little bit of extra depth so again, I'm being careful not to get any on the actual image itself, but just to keep that ink on the very edge of the card. Now I'm going to ink around the edge of the actual card base. Now you can see this done on, on lots of people's videos where they actually really angle that um, applicator and, and the more you angle it, the deeper the colour will go onto the front of the card but I'm keeping it almost vertical and I'm just touching the very edge. I don't want this to be too heavy. I want this card to look quite delicate and I'm just going right around the front of the card stock. And because we've got a lovely inner, I'm also coming around that inside edge. So I'm just coming at it from uh, each side and that way both sides get just a touch of that brown color. Now to apply that same treatment to the card inner, you're working on paper this time and it's much more tricky to uh, stop the paper from flopping about so that you get a nice neat uh, touch of ink along the edge. So I'm using a piece of brown cardstock, really it's just um, a piece of scrap cardstock uh, to support the paper. So I'm just using it so that it slips slightly underneath the um, edge of the paper that I'm working on um, so it acts as a rest, a support and a strengthener for my paper as I ink the edges. So I always attach my card inners in the same way. I'm working along the folded edge and on the top of the inner so the piece that isn't stamped and um, I'm going to add my double sided tape right along that folded edge and then I'm going to place my inner inside my card. Make sure everything's the right way around and I'm centering it on the back of the card so that I've got an even edge all the way around and I'm just shy of that fold and closing the card, pressing down along that fold and then that way by attaching it at the front when your person that receives the card opens the card, the inner will open with it and they'll be able to read the greeting inside. 
So for the decoration of this card I wanted to add some cherry blossoms or some apple blossoms or just some blossoms on some old branch. <laughs> and I'm going to be using this cherry blossoms die and I've cut just the branches using that die. You could quite easily cut them by hand if you wanted to, just to cut some random branch shapes. And I want some branches coming across the top of the card, um, mimicking that lovely spray of flowers on the collage stamp. That's the idea anyway. So I'm gonna build up a little display of twigs across this top edge and then a little bit in the bottom uh, left-hand corner. So to raise that uh, lovely collaged image from the front of the card, we're going to use foam pads to attach her. So I'm just adding one in each corner and I was just going to go with that and then I decided I'll just put one for luck in the middle. <laughs> so just making sure it's well supported and I'm just going to put it off centre and slightly angled. And again, I'm just thinking about where I might put these words, not sure yet, just having a little play with where things might go. And I'm going to uh, get my branches in position. The beauty of die cut branches like these is that you can um, just mix them up. It might not be that they form the exact uh, branch uh, structure that you want for your card, but as you can see here, I'm just joining the pieces together, perhaps cutting little pieces of branches away and uh, just attaching them uh, in a different configuration on the front of my card. So I'm going to just cut a little bit of branch off here and I'm going to add one at the bottom and I'm attaching all my branches with PVA glue and then I'm going to attach one more piece at the top. And then it's time to add all the little tiny blossoms. Again, I'm going to mix and match the colours. So I'm going to have some yellow and some uh, orange. And I'm just shaping them into a little cup shape by pushing down in their centres with a ball tool. And then attaching them with a little dot of glue. So when you actually press down on them to shape them, you want something that's soft underneath like a mouse mat. I've got a piece of foam here. You can see it's well worn. <laughs> and I'm just making a little pleasing arrangement of blossoms trailing onto my lovely collaged image. So I'm happy with how uh, the branches are now and I think it's time to find a home for the words and a couple of butterflies so I'm just shaping the butterfly wings and I end up using two butterflies so I've got some butterfly wings ready to use on another project I'm just going to be using two of the words dream and wish and I think I'm going to tuck them in here and add another butterfly So you can either use small foam pads or as I'm doing here, uh, little dots of silicone glue to attach your butterfly wings in position on your card. So I've just glued the little word strips in position, tucking them under the edge of the collaged image. And I had quite a bit of trouble getting my silicone glue out of the tube because I haven't used it in a while. Uh, but I have got there now and attached my little butterflies. And I think it just needs one little finishing touch and that's some centres for the blossoms on the tree. And I'm going to be using this uh, PVA uh, Pearl Glue by Cosmic Shimmer. And I'm just going to create some little dots. Again, I'm mixing and matching my colours. I'm using this spring green for the centre of the yellow flowers and a blue for the centre of the orange flowers. 
So you could use other things for the flower centres. You could use little gems or little pearls, little beads, uh, little dots of stickles if you wanted to add a little bit of sparkle. I know that Ranger Do Perfect Pearls, which is a similar paint to this Cosmic Shimmer one. And uh, I'm just finishing off with a couple of little uh, ever decreasing dots in the top and bottom corner of the card just to finish it off. So there you have it, another Rubber Dance Design Team video. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and I really hope that you pop along to rubberdance.com to go and check out all the beautiful stamps that Bibby has got over there. So this one is uh, definitely one for the ladies and it's just got that lovely romantic feel. So in just a moment I'll post the link back to my blog post where you'll find the cutting guide for this card. I really hope that you give it a go. There's lots of lovely techniques to try and uh, I hope that you agree that this has turned out to be a very pretty design team project. I've really enjoyed doing it and having the matching in it just finishes it off so that it makes it a lovely card to give to someone special on a special occasion. So if you enjoy my videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and join me on my creative journey. I look forward to bringing you more Rubber Dance Design Team projects, as well as lots of other creativity here on my YouTube channel. I'd also like to take this opportunity to say a great big thank you. I've had a lot of subscribers hitting that subscribe button lately and it really means a lot to me. It means that I'm doing something right, it encourages me to make more videos and I hope that you're learning something and getting creative yourself. So until next time, thank you for watching.